Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. If you're studying cardiovascular physiology, you've probably at some point seen a figure that looks just like this. And there's a lot of pieces to it, and it can be very confusing. And so what I'm going to do in this video is break down the pieces here. Now, as I go over this, it would be expected that you kind of have a general understanding of the cardiac cycle, uh, because I'm going to be referring to that several times over the course of the video. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to break down each of these pieces here and make this make a little more sense. Now, this is an alternate way of looking at a cardiac pressure volume loop. In a cardiac pressure volume loop, which we looked at previously, we really just had one graph right here. And on the vertical axis, it was pressure. On the horizontal axis, it was volume. And both were with, with respect to the left ventricle. Here, we're still going to be looking at the left ventricle. But the pressure part of this is actually now separated from the volume. And really, the the horizontal axis is more of a time axis. So we're actually seeing, first of all, how the pressure changes with time over the course of the cycle. And then we're seeing how the volume changes over the course of the cycle or over time. So this is just a different way of looking at it. And so before we dissect this, let's go over a few pieces that we need to understand. First of all, what chamber of the heart is this with respect to? Well, um, it could be any one of the four chambers, but I know it's the left ventricle here. The reason I know it's the left ventricle is because this says aortic. Okay, So only the left ventricle is associated with the aorta. Uh, the right ventricle would be associated with the pulmonary trunk. And you would see something similar to this, but almost always this is going to be with respect to the left ventricle unless otherwise stated. The red solid line here, this is the pressure in the left ventricle or left intraventricular pressure. This top dotted line up here, this is the pressure in the aorta, or the aortic pressure. Notice that it is not constant, it does fluctuate. Down here, this dotted line is the atrial pressure, or the pressure in the left atria. And then this blue line down here is the volume inside the left ventricle, volume of blood that is, at any given time. Okay. So the way we're actually going to do this is we're actually going to begin at the same point that we started at in the previous video. And that's we started out at a state where the AV valve, or in this case the mitral valve, that's what the left AV valve is called, is open and the aortic valve is closed. And when that's the case, we're in a period called ventricular filling. Okay, So at this point right here, the AV valve is open. Okay, That is the mitral valve. In the previous cycle, the aortic valve closed. So this vertical line right here is where the aortic valve closes. This vertical line right here is where the AV valve opens. And so we're kind of starting right here. So right now we're in ventricular filling. So that means the ventricles are in diastole, they're relaxed. And so the only thing we should see is an increase in blood volume in the left ventricle, but really no change in pressure. And that's exactly what we see. Look at the pressure during this entire time. It's really constant and not really changing a lot, right? That means we're in ventricular diastole and the ventricles are filling. But if you look at the volume, notice that the volume is increasing, okay? So right here at this point, the AV valve is open and it would have to be because if the ventricles are filling, they're filling with blood from the left atrium. So blood is moving from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Now here's an important point. The period of time between this vertical line right here and this one. Notice I skipped the middle one. It's this entire length of time right here. This is what we call passive filling. Okay? So the ventricles are filling, yes, but they're filling passively. Okay? They're filling basically due to gravity and the intrinsic pressures within the chambers due to the blood content. Okay? There's no contraction yet of the left atrium, so filling is completely passive. Now the first half of this is called rapid inflow between this vertical line and this one. This is rapid inflow. This is the first half of passive filling. The reason it's more rapid is because the ventricles have the least volume of blood they're going to have. So the filling is going to be more rapid. When you get to this vertical line between here and here, this period of time is what we call diastasis. There's really nothing special about it. It's just a period of time right before atrial systole when you're in passive filling, but the filling is starting to slow because the left ventricle is um, more full with blood. Okay, But this entire time from here to here, this is passive filling. First half of it's rapid inflow. 
second half is diastasis. And notice again, the pressure in the ventricle is not really changing, again, because we're in diastole. Now going back to this figure, um, after ventricular filling, there's going to be a really short period where the left atrium contracts. And technically, the ventricle is still filling there. It's just that only during this time does the atrium contract. And when the left atrium contracts, it's going to force the last bit of blood that it has into the left ventricle. This is active filling. Okay, And what we see here, find the figure, is that we have a blast push of blood here into the left ventricle. And so this period between this vertical line and this vertical line is atrial systole, so active filling, getting that last bit of blood into the left ventricle. Okay? Now technically there is a little bit of an increase in pressure in the left ventricle. Um, that's partially due to the fact that there's more blood getting in there really quickly, but also some push from the atria itself. Okay. Now we're at this vertical line right here. And the time between these two vertical lines right here is a short time period. This is isovolumetric contraction. Okay. So the ventricles are starting to contract. Pressure's increasing in the left ventricle, but blood is not moving. Remember why that is. So we're at isovolumetric contraction. Remember that initially at the onset of contraction of the ventricles, the pressure starts to increase in here, but it's only sufficient to close the AV valve. Okay? It takes a much higher pressure to actually open the aortic valve. And so there's a time period right here where both of these valves are closed. And if both valves are closed, blood doesn't move anywhere. And so the volume inside the left ventricle is constant, so it's isovolumetric. And so what you'll notice here is, is that the pressure here, the red line, goes above the atrial pressure. So notice here, it goes above the atrial pressure. And so when that happens, the AV valve closes. And so while we're on this red line right here between these two vertical lines, both valves are closed. Okay. So again, right here, the AV valve or mitral valve closes. And during this time period right here, both valves are closed. But then there's going to come a point right here where the pressure generated by the left ventricle is sufficient to overcome the aortic pressure. And so at this point, the aortic valve opens. And when the aortic valve opens, we are no longer in isovolumetric contraction. We're actually in the ejection phase. So notice in this phase, blood is being ejected from the left ventricle. So we see the pressure is going to go up, it's going to peak, and then it's going to start to come back down a little bit. And during this phase is ventricular ejection. So coming down here to the volumes, notice right here, during isovolumetric contraction, there's no change in volume because it's isovolumetric, so it's flatlined. But as soon as this aortic valve opens, when the left ventricular pressure exceeds the aortic pressure, we get ejection, and so we get this rapid decrease in volume in the left ventricle. Why? Because the blood is moving uh, from the left ventricle out the aorta. Okay, and into the systemic circulation. So the volume of blood in the left ventricle is decreasing. Okay? Now, as this ejection occurs, again, the ventricle is ejecting blood, so volume of blood is decreasing, and the ventricle is going to start relaxing. And so eventually, the pressure inside the left ventricle is going to fall beneath the aortic pressure. And so the aortic valve is going to close. So right here at this vertical line, and you can even see it over here on this side, the aortic valve closes. But remember, the mitral valve or AV valve is also still closed. So we're going to go through a phase right here, a short phase, where both valves are closed and the ventricles are relaxing. They're not contracting, they're relaxing. So it's a relaxation phase. Both valves are closed, so there's no change in volume in the left ventricle, so it's isovolumetric relaxation. So going back to this picture right here, we're in this phase. Okay? The ventricle, or left ventricle in this case, is relaxed. It's relaxing. Both valves are closed, and so there's no change in volume in the left ventricle. So we've got isovolumetric relaxation. All right? Now, again, the pressure is going to continue falling in the left ventricle, and eventually it's going to hit this threshold right here, which is the atrial pressure. Okay? That's this vertical line right here. And as soon as the pressure in the left ventricle falls beneath the atrial pressure, that's going to trigger 
the AV valve to open once again. Because remember, as long as the left ventricular pressure is higher than the atrial pressure, that AV valve or mitral valve is going to remain closed. However, right here we see the left ventricular pressure fall beneath the atrial pressure, and so right here that mitral valve or AV valve is going to open. And we can actually see that right here. And when that mitral valve or AV valve opens, that's going to allow the ventricles to fill once again. And that takes us right back to where we started, which is right here. Okay? And again, as the ventricles start to fill, we see the left ventricular volume going up. Okay? Now, there's a few other things we can get from this figure that we could also get from the pressure volume loop. We can actually estimate uh, the end systolic volume and the end diastolic volume. So right here, the maximum volume of blood that we have right before ventricular ejection, that was the end diastolic volume. And so again, you kind of have to estimate it, but let's just say it's about 130 milliliters in this case. Down here, we have the end systolic volume. This is the volume left in the left ventricle right before filling starts or after uh, contraction is complete. So this volume right here would represent the end systolic volume, that looks to be about 50 milliliters. And so we can actually calculate the stroke volume, which is the volume of blood pumped per beat of the left ventricle, by taking the end diastolic volume and subtracting the end systolic volume. So 130 mils minus 50 mils is 80 milliliters. So in this case, the stroke volume would be 80 milliliters, okay? So, hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of this figure. Again, just realize that this figure right here is giving you the same information as this figure, except that this one has pressure and volume within the same graph or within the same curve. This one has them actually as separate curves with respect to time or a progression type of axis. The same information is contained in both. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.